having this show with all these personal things has given me permission to go ahead and work in a more personal way, I think, in the future than I have. It's not art about art, it's art about my life. Emily Brown's recent show at Philadelphia's Gallery Joe was a revelation. In addition to the wash drawings that she is so well known for, Emily also showed a group of more private works. The gallery's director, Becky Curlin, told me about the show. This is the fourth solo exhibition at the gallery. We show drawings and original works on paper. Emily has always shown her large brush drawings with us. The works in the vault are works from her studio. They're her personal drawings that she has kept over the years. Some of these drawings date back to the 1960s. I went to her studio to prepare for this exhibition. She brought out many of these drawings that she had been keeping, and I thought this would be a wonderful way to introduce the other side of Emily to the public. The exhibition developed as a more personal view of Emily. I think the show has been wonderfully successful because many, many artists have come to the show and we're so happy to see this very personal side of Emily. And I can't tell you how many people use the word open to describe the exhibition. This work is so open. I first saw her work in a gallery in Maine and I wanted that painting so bad. I just wanted it so bad. <laughs> I find it very warm. I feel much better having come into this show. It makes my day. I kind of know what these two women mean. Emily's show brings a feeling of peace. And there was one small drawing that struck me as being as good as art gets. There is a welding of subject and technique here that turns ink and paper into something like magic. This little night scene with its haloed tree and starry sky is pure beauty. In the vault was a recreation of some of Emily's studio. I called her up and invited myself over to see the real deal. So what is this room? Well, we call this the conservatory and it's obviously got a ladder in it right now because I'm about to string some lights up to get ready for the holiday. This building is 90 feet deep. Until we cut this hole in the middle of it, it was very, very dark. So it's like living inside a sundial in a funny way. The light changes all the time. This is the husband. You are the legendary photographer, Will Brown, correct? <laughs> I don't know. There's probably another one that's more legendary. <laughs> <laughs> that, that book of poetry that you put together with that Tom yeah, it's amazing. Oh, really? You got to look at that. Oh, yeah, just beautiful. To me, those old cars in Philadelphia look like Havana. <laughs> Havana, the cars are in much better shape. Oh. <laughs> Emily and Will have lived in a beautiful house in the art museum area for decades. But when they bought it, it was not a fit residence. What was it of? A uh, beer distributor. Ah. Emily went to the Pennsylvania Academy for a while, but then moved on to Penn. As much as it pains me to tell you this, she actually preferred Penn to the Academy. At Penn, I met a couple of very important influences, Rudy Burkhart and Neil Welliver. One thing that we caught from Neil Welliver was a passion for old houses and for restoring old things, and, and that's kind of a disease with us. This is what it was like when we bought it, and, and it was just like broken. This is it. That's our house. Wow. And here's the upstairs. Can I ask how much it cost? 60000 Wow. Yeah. And Can I ask how much it's worth now? Yeah. We don't know. 65000 No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope more than that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Here's our friend Steve Sears, who went to the Academy. He's an iron worker. He made a big steel beam. Here it is, here. And is that you guys? That's okay. us with our daughter when she was seven. Will and me and Steve. 
Well, time waits for no man or rabbit, and their seven-year-old daughter is now married and has a son. In fact, the day I visited was kind of a special day for this very creative couple. Today's our wedding anniversary. How many? Uh, 45, I think. Is that right? Wow. <laughs> She's been a great wife now. And in my opinion, a pretty great artist as well. She told me how her work has progressed over the years. I was a plein air landscape painter when I could get out there and do it for 25 years probably and it just seemed limited and I finally had a studio. This space was unimproved until mid-90s and we'd lived here 15 years and I started playing with paper and different materials and different scale of work and different images and non-images and stuff and eventually worked into ink wash, which I love doing, and that's been my passion for a good 10 or 12 years. I start by photographing a situation in nature that I love, that interests me, that is complex enough. I actually project it on the page, but then it just takes off on its own, and the material changes everything. The image keeps evolving from what it originally was to what it will end up being. So it's the material in me working with an original kind of template that is soon not there. And I just have to take my time. The ink when it's wet is darker than when it's dry. So when I'm working, I can't just keep going. I have to stop and, and see what the tone will be after a few hours and then come back and say, okay, that's that dark, it should be darker. I can't subtract anything. It's a, a watching and a very, very intuitive act to look and watch, see what it wants to be. And then recently, I started taking some unfinished pieces apart reassembling them with other things, and I have made a number of collages. Putting these things together is a very intuitive act, more than making the, the ink drawings. Taking different things and assembling them is a, such a natural thing to do, and I had not tried it before last year. So I got kind of rip-roaring excited about doing a lot of them, and they all turned out very different from each other. Here is a collage which I made about Waldo County in Maine, where we go every summer. I had collected parts of drawings. This is actually a complex ink drawing that already has shapes within it. Then this is a drawing made by my husband in 1965 or 6. And this is an old map showing some of the landscape right in that county kind of moth-eaten. There are little bug holes in it, but it, and I like that texture. And some postcards. There was no plan ahead of time that it should look a certain way, but rather taking parts and playing with them until the assemblage seemed whole. But here's another part of my life. I'm a practicing member of a Quaker meeting, and I made a series of prints based on Quaker testimonies. Well, Will photographed an open book at the Meeting House in oh, Fourth and Arch. The storage for many, many documents of early Quakers was right in that Meeting House until about three years ago. This is a single page of certain Quakers in 1776 releasing their slaves. I had made this line etching of water and I put the etching on the, doc on the digital print. Cindy Ettinger, who was a wonderful oh, yeah. master printer, she helped me with this. She did the printing. I admire Emily very much for her restless artistic spirit. She is constantly inspired by new ideas. Recently, she has been paying homage to the photographer Edward Mybridge. And it's not as if she ever abandons old styles and techniques, as this sneak peek at a large unfinished landscape painting makes clear. I made plein air paintings and then 
worked from them onto this big canvas in the studio, and something I have never done before. But it's not done yet. It's a little too pale and milky, and it doesn't quite have the vigor that I am hoping for. And finally, there are the paintings and drawings of collected toys. As you love me. Is there no limit to the imagination and artistic drive of this remarkable woman? They have quite a few toy paintings. I, uh, if you've seen them. I saw yeah. some. There was one with a rabbit that was really nice. It kind of gave lie to the idea that Gallery Joe's just works on paper, because that was definitely a... Well, she, she's a... Get these out of here. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's so afraid all her artists are going to stop. Okay, you're showing paintings now. You can't get away from it. Ah, uh, heck. With artists as good as Emily, exceptions are bound to be made.